Howdy, folks. We have tea. Actually, it's a bit warm still this evening for tea, but there you go. Fancy some. Been uh, topping 30 over here in the UK, which for us is extraordinarily warm we are talking about it getting hotter next week if that happens everything will just fall apart in this country the trains won't run people will melt because we just cannot cope with any heat Uh, let me know how my audio level is, anyone viewing. Um, hope you've all been good this week. Ah, Laurie's, Laurie's listening, says the audio is fine, which is good. We like that. We like that a lot. I've been kind of crazy busy this week, um, which is a shame because I've been trying to get some things finished. But um, I have other financing uh, responsibilities as well. Annoying, but there you go. I've made a little bit of progress, has to be said. Let me um, get something up and running that we're going to talk about. Um, whilst we're waiting for others to join, let's do an import. Um, let's do an import. Right, where have I put this? I should have copied it over earlier, any luck? This is shown chronologically where is it that I can't see what I am looking for ah there it is uh, manufacture CAD let's open this one Oh, where do I want to put this? Um, let me just temporarily put it in. In KiCad. Hold on. KiCad, KiCad imports. Should do. Auto match layers, okay. Dumb. Silk screen's a bit crap, but hey, we don't need to worry about that to start. Right, let me pull that up on the screen so you guys can see what we're talking about here. So this this evening, what I wish to cover is um, 
I'm ordering some new PCBs. So, um, I think I've covered all the other ones, such as the blades and the tiles that we're doing. What I haven't yet covered is the changes to the um, mezzanine board. Now, let me just remind you, that's the board that goes on top that has a microcontroller on it and the blades. Okay, so I've changed this and for a number of reasons. So I'm gonna go over what the new version of that looks like. Functionally, it doesn't really change much, but there's some slight layout changes, some improvements, and also um, there are two versions, more importantly. So I'm gonna open the one closest to the current one first. So let me uh, get that up, keycard. Uh, One. Well, I should be able to see that on screen now. So this is the new version of that. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, and then I'm going to talk about its um, its kind of sibling. And I'm going to talk about why we've changed these things. We've had some interesting conversations as well about um, the QSPI MEM, which is the library of code that exists within Black Crab firmware and we're in HDL implementation currently in Amaranth that, that can be synthesized on the FPGA to enable the two devices to communicate with each other and also for the host to communicate over USB with the STM32 which is running it and then in turn communicate and we've got to do some more work on that but I've got to get the um, hardware done first um that's going off I may even go off tomorrow morning if I'm lucky I've, the trouble is it's just squeezing everything in at the moment I am so so busy actually not getting anywhere but um, talking to people mainly on the telephone answering emails and just doing ugh, annoying stuff that I have to do in order to um, move forward uh, stuff that's nothing to do with this this uh, project but just you know living stuff just life stuff income you know work that kind of boring stuff um, so uh, I should go through this first um, should I do a review of what we have? So yes, if you look below, there you're looking top down onto uh, something that's already put together. And right on the base, you've got the tiles. Then the next layer, you've got the ICE Logic Bus, which has the FPGA on it. And that has the kind of gold prongs with the aperture for the tiles to come out and then on the very top what you can see the back of here uh, connected via these black edge NXT connectors um, is the kind of black edge board if you like and this has the microcontroller on it so this is the system controller uh, in this case it also has uh, some blades on it there's another blade there on this one. Then there's a SD Slope MMC card which is connected to the microcontroller, not the FPGA. USB is here, and then Hyper RAM here. Those are the main kind of features on here. Um, so that's changed around a little. 
we give you a close up of that so you can remember what that looks like from the previous uh, iterations. So if you look at the diagram now on your right hand side, you'll notice it's slightly different. We still got the three blades on the right hand side. I know it's inverted in the camera, but we've lost this blade here. And the USB that was there is now up here next to this FPC connector. Um, the SD card connector has moved down and the, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but the um, debug connector is now moved over to here. So let's take a look at that then on the right hand side here. So the hyperbus memory, uh, the RAM here, that's still in the same place. The flash is still in the pla same place that hasn't moved. The mode button that was down here is now besides the hyper RAM up here. The SD card that was up in the top left hand corner here is now moved down here. I'm replacing where the SD MMC card was is the debug connector. So that will now be pointing out here out of the um, the west side of the board if you like or at least from this perspective. Um, then everything over here is pretty much the same as it was that hasn't really changed. The USB that was here is now at the top and that comes out between the two um, the prongs here so it's level with that that's where you'll be connecting the USB and the um, blade that was down here has now gone completely and that is because when we when I was looking at uh, this doot, down here over here when you fit in See where this blade is now? This is the old blade. Hold on, on this side so I can point to it with the pencil. That now sits right on top of the power connector on the Ice Logic board, which is underneath. And you can squeeze it in, it's just not very practical moving forward. So I've taken that blade away so that it doesn't, so there's no possibility of interference between this, the blade at the top, and the power connector at the bottom. Um, and I showed you that new XT30 power connector uh, last week and this is the kind of cable that fits into that and that can supply uh, direct power to the um, tiles. So uh, the other thing that that changes then is what we do with what were the I.O. connections for that blade, which you'll see these here coming down here. They now go to this header here, which is a right angled 0.1 inch header, which exposes those six I.O.s that were connected to the blade um, plus one ADC or mixed signal connector, which is connected to the STM32. Um, it also outputs the free volt free, the V battery, because you notice that big, um, you can see it on the base here, these connectors along there, these three ones, that's all gone now. Um, I'm not having the direct battery backup mount on there. You'd externally connect that now through, through the header. So the V battery is connected there as well. Um, there are some advantages of going this route over having the um, um, extra blade is it's easy to hook onto these for things like UART for example if you want to do a UART and in fact two of these uh, signals are also connected to the internal uh, one of the UARTs inside the STM32 which at the moment is disabled so they can either be used as FPGA or uh, UART pins and the other 
uh, FPGA pins can be also be used. You might want to use them for logic analyzer output, for example, and have that all built in, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, the other thing I moved, so in this corner there used to be the uh, RGB LED, and now it sits here above the uh, this new right angle 0.1 inch header, EXT0 in this case. I may change the name of that. So some fairly minor changes really, quite a bit of clean up. Um, it's enabled me to better route some of the stuff, so I've rerouted some of the pieces, key pieces. The power distribution's a bit better. The ground planes a bit better. Um, there's a few advantages there as well. So I'm quite happy with it now. It's taken me a long time because I've been doing it in bits of box with lots of interruptions. So uh, let me know any feedback. I hope you're all not too shocked. Uh, I'm guessing that most of what I've changed here is what you expected. Feature wise, from what the current dev kit is, uh, this new version is has slightly less features in that it doesn't have that extra blade, but it does have the extra header. So it's kind of um, swings and roundabouts to use a bonkers English um, saying. Um, I also think it's nicer to have the debug header up here pointing out this way because I didn't like where that was pointing out um, over one of the uh, apertures. So at the moment if you take a look at where the uh, debug cable is, it's here and it goes right across the aperture. Um, so if you're doing something on the aperture here or you have connectors or something that can kind of get in the way. Having it come out the same side um, as it will actually come out up here. Having it come out up here is much more convenient for connecting up. In my humble opinion, uh, if you um, have any thoughts on this, let me know, obviously. So the changes are relatively minor. Uh, feature wise, it's almost identical. There's very little difference. Um, there are some physical things just slightly moved around, but feature wise, it's pretty much identical. The main difference is you have a 0.1 inch right angle header rather than a blade. That's the only real feature difference. Most of it is just moving stuff about. To make it work nicely now where that header comes out it comes out on the opposite side so you've got usb on one side which is this side here i think god i confused myself no that's where the header comes out on this side right angle just pokes out the side here and then the usb comes out this side out here okay and it fits nicely without obscuring anything or interfering with anything and the right angled header up here is very similar it's about the right size for there not to interfere with anything so minor changes um, hopefully it's not going to upset anyone um, I've also fixed one, one of the things I fixed is if you look on the diagram here if you look at uh, the mounting holes we didn't really use them on these because you don't need to but when you do want to use them you've got one up top here one at the bottom there one on this side and one at that side now unfortunately this one here at the bottom i think it's this one it could be this one at the top actually it's too tight close to the sd card it gets impeded you're okay with something like this, which is a very thin connector, but we normally want to use the six mil high uh, nylon black spacers here. Um, so I fixed that as well by moving this side around a bit because it's now compressed down, it's not taking up as much room. So A, that it doesn't interfere with that new XT30 power connection, but also 
doesn't interfere with this as much as well. So that kind of just fixes a minor uh, physical uh, issue with the spacers and the spacer hole as well whilst I was there. Uh, what pins do you have on the header? Uh, Laurie was asking. I was wondering about having five volt on it. It's still possible, Laurie. I was contemplating exactly the same thing yesterday. What we have at the moment here, so if you look at these pins, uh, we've got six FPGA pins. Then here we've got uh, an ADC pin. If you can see me waggling about this cursor, isn't very easy to see actually. Um, uh, I don't know if I can change the cursor to something else. What if I do that? No. Uh, T. No. Mm. Yes. No, no, that's helpful. Anyhow, here. But you've got the ADC here. So I did think, well, maybe not connect the mix signal here. Take the mix signal to the LED, for example. And then use this for five volts. So, what's your argument or what's your thinking, Laurie, on having the five volt there? Because obviously, you're thinking about something, thinking it'll be useful. And I mean, I certainly was thinking, but you know, and unlike a blade where you don't get the five volts, that could be handy, right? So do we do the five volts or do we do the mix signal? We can do either. I'm sure uh, Laurie's already thinking of something like connecting up um, a PS2 keyboard or a nunchuck or some such. Because that immediately that was the kind of thing I was thinking of this header would be useful for. I occasionally use 5 volt on the black ISMX board header. <laughs> yeah, so I could replace the ADC with the um, with 5 volt. It's not a problem. It's not far away. Easy to route there. I don't know what anyone else thinks. Uh, one use was an ADC P mod that needed it. Really? An ADC that needed 5 volts? Was it like a... Did you need a 5 volt analog input or something then? But 5 volt pins are a bit dangerous. Yes they are. Especially when they're adjacent to pins that can only handle 3 volts. Which is a negative to putting the 5 volts on there. Oh, excuse me, yawning. God, it's been a long week. It's only middle of it. Um, I also had an LCD text display that needed five out. All oh, right, okay. Sometimes LCD, you know, you can get those like little teeny tiny LCD seven sex. Those are nice. Some of those need five volt as well. In fact, you, I think you meant to generate like plus and minus five volt for those, but that's another story. You most certainly need a larger voltage swing than three volt.
Currently we only have 5 volt via the Proto P mod tile. And you may not be using that. Or oh, you mean one might not be using that. You mean generally rather than me personally, right? Um, yeah, but any tile could also have 5 volt, don't forget. All right. Ooh. Ooh, crikey. Keeping you all up. Um, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Yeah, well, it's definitely worth thinking about, and it's definitely an important idea. I thought of exactly the same thing, but I haven't been brave enough to do it at this point in time yet. What did you say the other pins were? Presumably ground, 3 volt, 3 and VBAT. That's correct, yeah. You got them all. Sorry, well done. Yeah, ground and 3 volt, 3 because, well, obviously, and VBAT because we don't have the battery coin uh, connector uh, footprint on the top because I hated that. It's now on the header, so you, we can feed in a header. Um, you can actually buy the coin cell adapters and they just plug in. So you can do it that way, as in like the flying lead versions if you need to. Um, you can see some naming stuff. It doesn't show up very well here because I've imported it from Eagle into KiCad, which doesn't necessarily do the right thing with the silk screen and the fonts. You have to adjust them afterwards. But yeah, this board would effectively be called the Black Edge F7 hyphen, the small print HB 12864. Yes, it's a mouthful, but it's okay. Um, reason being, there is also, let me just show you, um, Just pull us in, bear with me. The other thing I want to order is where the hell is the folder that I normally put this in? <laughs> I don't think this is in, ah, um, oh, it's in date order, that's why. You will notice a massive similarity here. Can you see how similar this looks? 
It is, but identical. But look what it is called at the top here. Black Edge F7 Q Spy 3264 because it has Q Spy memory elements. In this case, 32 megabits of RAM, 64 megabits. Sorry, 32 megabits of uh, flash, 64 megabits of RAM. And you can see on the left hand side here, it doesn't have Hyperbus chips, it has QSPI chips. But apart from that, it's identical. So effectively, there's a pair of boards one Hyperbus based memory, the other QSPI based. But everything else is the same. Which is the other reason for doing the slight rework. To enable that to take place. So that we can then offer this in two variants and one will be significantly less than the other in terms of dollar value. Whereas the base um, combination of the Black Edge and Ice Logic will probably be around $120, $130. The Q Spike version, i.e. the non Hyperbus version, is likely to be around $100 ish i'm still playing around with the pricing and costing etc um does that leave you some spare pins on the qspi board no it doesn't except maybe one because the qspi flash and the qspi ram have their own sets of pins so you can talk to them concurrently remember a while back we had this conversation about it would be kind of nice if we could um, go for that kind of split you know the Harvard type uh, approach where you can access your program and the RAM concurrently to get some speed ups and do some clever stuff well you could do that with this So it uses effectively the same amount of pins. There is an exception to that, I think, which is just one pin, but let's forget about that for a moment. For all intents and purposes, all the pins are used up. What do you think? Because not everyone's going to want Hyperbus. Or even that kind of size of flash. I know this is slightly different from what I was saying before but I wanted to keep these two almost identical which is good from a maintenance point of view as well as a build point of view the exception just being the the hyperbus version has hyper flash and hyper ram and the qspy version has qspy flash qspy ram that is the only difference Come out of tea, folks. My last bit. On to the cold stuff.
Um, and these are pretty much done design wise. I'm going to sleep on them before I order them, but uh, they're pretty much done unless we change something this evening. Ooh. So what do you think of the changes? Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. Alloy says seems okay to me. Cheaper option is probably a good idea, yeah. I definitely need to have a cheaper option. I decided. Having a lower cost option is definitely beneficial. And as I say, not everyone's gonna wanna run flat hyper hyper bus memory peripherals. Not everyone. Some people are just going to go with QSPY, and that will be fine for them. Um, I don't know if I. Is there any other questions on the, the Black Edge boards, the system boards? Because um, we could have a quick look at some of the other stuff. I haven't done all the panelization yet. In fact, I think we've seen most of the other boards anyhow. I don't think we need to cover too much on that. Unless, I don't know if I copied over the tiles. Um, just uh, have a look at my um, panel system. Bear with me. Sorry, guys. Is that not working? What's going on with my keyboard here? Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I've updated the uh, motor tile um hold on 
can probably copy that over. So there are some subtle changes to the motor tile, not big ones. Well done. It's been taking rather a long time copying across. Oh, wrong IP address. It is changed. Uh, any more questions on the um, black edge side of things before I look at uh, the motor board? Um, Laurie's saying Presumably the QSPI flash is not connected to allow boot of bit streams directly from the i40 so not like the Black Ice MX, still only programmable from the STM32. That's correct, Laurie. And the reason for not doing that is because we use those very same pins as a QSPI MEM interface, and it would interfere with that. And if we wanted to write to something that was connected um, to the FPGA, it helps if it's not on the same pins. So this way it goes in through the QSPI uh, E port, the HGL synthesis can then take that and write it out to the ROM, QSPI ROM, whereas if it was on the same pins that, that, that would not be a good idea. So that part of it hasn't changed, you're quite right. And that's the reason why it hasn't changed. Any other questions on the black edge stuff? Otherwise I'll open the uh, motor tile because there was a subtle change on that. I can always open this afterwards anyway. Um, Import uh, and you tiles, you tiles, you tiles, you tiles, you tiles. Uh, Laurie's asking if I finished the starter tile. Yeah, it's pretty much done. I've got some checking to do on it. I don't have that copied on this machine. I've just got the old version on this machine. Um, Trying to find out where this tile was. I did copy it over. The motor tile. Where is it? Uh, crikey, what was it called? This one. Can't, can't, can't. Where are you, can't? Yes. 
auto match layers okay yes so this is the next change it's very subtle you might not even remember um, what the previous version of this looked like but now um, so what we had before was we had 10 of these IO connectors whoa 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 that's not right No, forgive me. This is the old, old one. So have another go. Um, do, 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 just amuse yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Um, oh, where did I put it? Not dual encoder two, is it the encoder? Ah, oh, three. But it's this one. It has a higher number, could be. Um, it import. Yes. What a match. Yes. This is better. Hold on, let me tell it to update. Right, so what's changed here on this version is just a very subtle change. Before we had two sets of five terminal sprung connectors, these orange things. I remember showing you uh, these. So on the board we had two lots of these which were five pins. That's now been replaced. I ordered some more and they arrived so I figured I'd use them. And these are the six pin variant. I didn't realise at first that that was available. So it's the same thing just six pins and that's more convenient because there's two of those because 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 of the wonderful things he does um, that means we can get everything on the connectors so if you look down here we've got the two motors two motor lines the push pull if you like for the motor then we have uh, ground, VCC, A and B. And A and B are the encoders. But you also need the power there sometimes to power the encoders, you see. Which we can do nicely with the six pins, not five. Before we had to share some of those pins between the two connectors. And that would have ended up you stuffing in more than one wire to a terminal, which wasn't a good idea. So um, that was a minor update. And there was a bunch of other minor updates on some of the other tiles and things as well. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't have the newer version of the starter tile on here yet. This is um, the older version. Oh, 
damn flies. Import it. Pretty sure it's the older, not newer version. It's on here. Um, I think this is the same, yeah, this is the old version. Um, this isn't going to give you anything new. Yeah, nothing to see on that one. Not been updated. Uh, what else would I have updated? I think that's it really on the hardware changes. Don't think I changed anything else. Um, no, nothing else off the top of my head. Right, any questions on the hardware changes? Ah, oh, Twinkle, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come and say hello to everyone. Hello. I'm Twinkle. And I probably want some more food. Oh, you want to go through the door? No. You want food, don't you? Let me just give the cat some more food. I owe you some, don't I? Thank you. Yeah, I do, I know. You were out when I was doing it earlier. And some biscuits. Right. So, what else should we cover then this evening? So, I can't see any more hardware questions.
Oh, my um, chips arrived for the starter uh, tile. My Darlington's. Darlington. Uh, did anything else arrive? I don't think so. Oh, I so I sold the very last Black Ice MX. Unbelievably, I do kind of have one left, but it's a bit mangled. Well, it's not mangled. It's just one of the um, one of the corners is a bit dodgy on my connector. I need to check it. Bit of a chunk taken out off the edge here. Can't see you won't focus. I'll probably use that myself. Oh, I didn't want to focus on it. It's a slightly dinged one. But that's it, they're all gone, all the MXs. All gone. They are now history. Mm, that's nice smelling soap. Laurie says, uh, what did this starter tile end up having on it? Well, exactly what you see on the right, on the right. Actually, um, although I think I've taken this chip off now because there's no real benefit of it, and the audio might be mono, but apart from that, it's the same. Do 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 do. Um, so what I'm hoping is I can get all these ordered off now. I think I'm pretty happy with them. Um, and that would be good because I can then just focus on, I mean, we spoke about it earlier in terms of priorities. Obviously I've got documentation to do, but one of the things that, um, is really a priority is just getting the Q spy stuff finished because um, it's kind of working okay at the moment but it'd be nice to have things like I mean the rights working okay and the HDL that uh, Laurie's written is working which is really nice uh, but it'd be nice to be able to read which we're not yet doing I, I also have to make the get the flash working in black crab as well so that we can write to the flash chip so we can make um, make the synthesis perfect and persistent um, because you can't do that at the moment so I need to add that in um, and I do need to add some documentation <sighs> again that's become very clear uh, iPost was asking about using the um, QSPI mem if you remember, I think we spoke about it last week on the last stream, using the QSPI mem from Verilog in this case, or wrapping the Verilog that he has in Amaranth in order to be able to use QSPI mem. So we definitely need some documentation around that as well. That's quite important. Um, what else did I look at that I thought was interesting? Oh, there was some talk this week about PIO. Um, and hopefully I think Laurie might do some work on that when he gets time um, let me know Laurie if you're thinking of working on that but it would be good if we could hook that up with the um, storm sock uh, 
and one of the things that I was thinking about on that front is if you're writing your PIO assembly if you like or commands in Python aka the way that uh, you would do it in MicroPython using the um, Raspberry Pi ASM for the PIO state machines then there'd be enough information in the Python defined version of your PIO program such that uh, it could be analyzed in Python and the state machine resources could be predetermined and synthesized and only what was needed if it was all done you know in Python kind of thing was what I was thinking not only that but you might be able to optimize some of it um, later on Yeah, Laurie's saying, I was thinking of doing a, an Amaranth version of, I, of PIO. Exactly. Oh, yes, that's the other thing. So, um, as Laurie says, but we'll probably look at uh, HyperFlash Controller first, yes, because um, Laurie's been doing some work on the um, Hyperbus. He's got the HyperRAM working with Orchard and uh, Storm Sock. Have you got it working with Stormsock? Uh, and I know also he's um, contemplating whether uh, the flash could be made to work as well, the hyper flash, which would be rather excellent. So he's going to probably do the hyper flash controller before we return to the PIO stuff. Um, but yeah, I think the PIO stuff would be interesting. I've got an annoying fly buzzing around my head now. I might have to just chase it out in a second. Hmm. And I don't have any snacks, which is a really bad thing. No sugar treats. Oh, in fact, no, I do. I've got a, I've got a lemon sherbet left. Let's have one of those. Why not? Do the traditional sugar thing for the stream. For the stream, you understand. Not for myself. Uh, Laurie's saying it'd be interesting to see what Sean Cross Zobs is thinking of doing with the PIO HDL. Yes, because um, Laurie had a query from Zobs about using the um, PIO HDL. Yeah, it'd be cool to see what he does. Good if we can make it more efficient as well. If I remember rightly, it used quite a few resources. Okay, well, I'm not going to cover anything else this evening. I'm probably going to keep it short and sweet. Because, um, as I say, I do have quite a lot to handle this week. So I can use the time to do that. 
Are there any more questions around the hardware before I go? Now is a good time to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know more people have arrived. I hope they haven't missed too much. If you have any questions about what we've done, fire away now. Um, I'll go back to one of the previous ones. Let's go back. Back in time. Why do it start sometimes and not other times? That's really weird. those that didn't see it earlier this is the new black edge version of that feature wise it's pretty much similar just slightly better routing and a few moved a few bits and pieces around took one of the blades off which is now a header and it's also has a sibling which is QSPI based rather than Hyperbus based. For those that missed it earlier. Oh, Western Long says finally able to properly join the stream. Oh dear, did you have some um, interweb problems, Western? Welcome, by the way. Oh, are you back, Twinkles? Oh, yes. Wrong side of the door. What a surprise. That never happens. Mm. Oh, Weston, you got your new um, ST link version three. Oh, yes, I should do a link to that. For anyone that's had problems getting hold of these, um, Weston found some in stock um, in the UK and Europe. You can get them from. Hold on. Uh, S link V I post it on the um, Twitch as well. But basically, go to RS Electronics in the UK and Europe, 
they have some in stock um, I posted a link in Discord as well and they had quite a few they had 940 odd I think when we looked the other day I wonder how many they've got now Crikey they only have 224 that means they sold 700 in the last couple of days The other people that we saw had them were Newark in the US, but they had a much smaller quantity. If you're wondering about what we're talking about, Finding these has been a bit like um, trying to find uh, rocking horse shit to use um, rather terrible analogy these ST link version 3 which is good if you're doing black crab because black crab uses RS probe sorry probe RS which is supported by or supports this particular feedback Go on the wrong side of the door again. So have you been using it then, Weston? Your new acquisition. Oh. Just hit the sherbet and the lemon sherbet. Wow, so where did I say the other one was? Newark. Wow, what's this doing? It's taking ages. Very slow. Those are adapters. Hmm, maybe they're out of stock now. Can't see them. We're going to need to put the right incantation in here. It might be too general. Why am I not picking it up? Oh, it's because they are out of stock. Look. Again. I 
Weston. Yeah, so Weston's saying, I can officially play with the STM32 on the dev kit now. I mean, you could could have done before just using the USB bootloader, but yeah, better to use a debug. Much better. Voila. But RS still has some in stock, but not many. I can't believe it's gone down to 225. I'm sure it was like 946 or something when we looked the other day. That means they've shifted 700 of them in a matter of days. But there must have been um, some pent up demand because you couldn't get them anywhere at one point. How's the quest for motor driver ICs? Well, I haven't done any more um, sourcing yet. I will check on those again soon. Um, Western, I was just showing that I just slightly modified the motor tile just now. Um, that will continue to be an issue and I will re revisit that. Uh, I was just saying earlier to Laurie that um, my priority is to get these PCBs ordered. Then I can switch back and focus on the um, cues by mem as per discussions earlier and get the rest of that working and get the flash stuff working as well um, any other stuff that we need to cover did you see did you did you see the uh, new version of the um, Black Edge board, the uh, system board? So how it was before on the dev kit, we got a slightly different version now. I made some changes. So this flash, sorry, this uh, blade is not there any longer. We're down to three blades because that was impeding or could possibly impede. I know you can just get it in where it sits above that new uh, XT30 power input for the tiles. Um, and then I just moved the um, USB up to the top here. And then there's a header at the bottom here where the pins from the um, missing blade go. Not only that, but I'm doing a version of this. Um, on one hand, it doesn't have the hyper hyperbus memory, but has a QSPY memory. Uh, when you go back and do the um, review, the bits that you missed, you'll see. Um, so there's a QSPY version of this that you see to the left. So this one is the hyperbus version, and then. Um, we've also got the QSPY version of this now. see the difference in the memory so this is the q spy version that's the only bit that's different between these two and obviously the naming just a short uh, recap on what we covered earlier Uh, no, it's not the memory that will program the FPGA on boot. It is just a different choice. So you can either go with Hyperbus, Flash and RAM, or you can go with QSPY, Flash and RAM. 
and on the QSPAR you only get 32 megabits not 128 megabits of flash it's for the lower cost version but they are identical in all other respects basically Ooh. keeping myself awake so far away if there are any questions otherwise I'm going to um, call it for the stream this evening because um, I've still got quite a lot to do unfortunately No questions? Okay, folks. Well, I'll be down on uh, Discord as well. Uh, I think Western's typing something. Um, I will be down on Discord. You can ask me directly down there this evening. Um, and there will be a recording going up of this as well, Western, so you can recap. And I will see you all next week if I don't speak to you on Discord. Ciao.